Hi, this is Patrick Horn, president of Gap. I'd like to thank Fujifilm for their support of this podcast. Welcome to this GapCast. My name is Patrick Horn, nurse practitioner from the University of Florida in Gainesville. My name is Chris Lovell. I'm a nurse practitioner in hepatology at the University of South Alabama in Mobile, Alabama. Well, Chris, thanks for joining me today. I um, wanted to talk to you a little bit about, about biomarkers. Yes, um, so I guess let's start with what is a biomarker? A biomarker is an indicator for a disease state or a condition. An example of this that we use commonly in hepatology would be the L3 percentage of AFP or des gamma carboxyprothrombin, otherwise known as DCP, which are used to detect hepatocellular carcinoma, otherwise known as HCC. Biomarkers can also be used to measure uh, response to treatment as well. Okay. Um, I know we're going to talk about the process of how biomarkers come to be, but uh, to start off with, who, who monitors biomarkers or who approves new biomarkers to become uh, commercially available? Uh, they are first approved by the FDA, but then there is a very rigorous validation process that they have to go through beyond that. The Early Detection Research Network, otherwise known as the EDRN, is the entity of the U.S. government that um, puts these biomarkers through their paces through this rigorous uh, validation process. The EDRN was uh, created in the year 2000 by the, uh, under the recommendations of the National Cancer Institute to help create and validate biomarkers for the early detection of uh, diseases such as cancers. Okay. And when we're talking about, you know, drug development, we, we really think of the three phases, phases one, two, and obviously three of drug development. Is, are biomarkers a similar process? Do they have the same types of phases that drugs go through? Or There is a uh, structured uh, validation process uh, that is evidence-based. Um, however, it is a little different than the three uh, drug development phases that we're accustomed to. Uh, but certainly, biomarkers do not just go straight from laboratory development directly to clinical application. And can you walk us through the phases of, of biomarker development? Absolutely. So there are five phases that the EDRN monitors. Uh, the first phase is the discovery phase. This is the preclinical phase in which um, researchers uh, may have an idea of uh, a protein or um, other entity that could detect a disease state. Uh, phase two is the assay development and clinical validation phase. Um, in this phase, you take the, uh, say, protein that you uh, think that you discovered in phase one, and you develop a test to uh, detect that protein. Uh, in this phase, also, you have clinical validation and showing that uh, this test that you've created can actually detect the thing that you are trying to detect. Phase three is a retrospective uh, validation process. Uh, in this phase, they take the biomarker and test it against archived tissue samples from patients that have a certain disease say uh, HCC, for example, hepatocellular carcinoma. And what they look at is whether or not the biomarker would be able to detect HCC before it became clinically apparent in this patient. So before the patient developed any symptoms or before the patient uh, had any evidence of HCC on imaging. So phase four is the uh, prospective uh, trials of the phases. And what this is looking at is uh, whether or not the biomarker is going to be able to um, filter out the target subjects, such as patients who actually have HCC. Um, and this is kind of where the rubber meets the road for the biomarkers, because passing phase four can have implications for uh, updates and clinical guidelines. And phase five is the final phase, and this is cancer impact. And this is looking at the population impact that the use of the biomarker has had. So in other words, how has the biomarker changed the landscape of the disease state that's in question? Okay. So quite the rigorous journey, I would say, for biomarkers. It is. Do, do they all make it? No, certainly not. Uh, many phase out due to lack of accuracy, reliability, or lack of added value. So I guess the bottom line is, you know, why as clinicians should we, do we need to understand the process and why do we care about the process? Well, I think it's important that clinicians understand how these are validated because it is a rigorous process. And if you understand the amount of evidence that goes into uh, validating these biomarkers, you may 
uh, have more confidence in their use. Um, more specifically as APPs, you know, we're in the trenches taking care of our patients daily. And I think we need to have the confidence to use the best tools at our disposal to, uh, you know, detect diseases earlier in our patients. Great. Well, thank you, Chris, for your time. And again, thank you all for joining today's GapCast. And uh, thank you. Thank you.